Aging and disease are biochemical processes that happen over many decades. So if we track and optimize well-established biomarkers of organ and systemic health, can aging and disease risk be slowed? Apologies if you've heard that a billion times, but that's the central premise of this channel. So with that in mind, last week I blood tested for the sixth time in 2023. So what's my biological age? And we can see that data here. This is using Dr. Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator as an index of biological age. And if you have similar blood test data, you can calculate your own pheno age. That link will be in the video's description. So when entering the data for the nine component biomarkers on this test, I get a biological age of 34 years, which is 16.7 years younger than my chronological. And if you're familiar with the channel, you, the last test, which looked like an outlier, this is a nice rebound. Uh, that test that could have been caused by tryptophan megadosing. So I took tryptophan out and went back to my normal routine and hence the almost 17 year reduction relative to chronological age. Now note that the 17, approximately 17 year age reduction could be even a little bit better as for the 13th consecutive test, Quest's high sensitivity C-reactive protein measurement was less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. So CRP could be lower than 0.3, but it's not higher as that, that's the limit of their sensitivity for their ability to detect CRP. Now, rather than looking at data entered into a spreadsheet, if you're interested in screenshots from the lab report, all blood test data is included later in the video. Now, note that this is just one test. For more context, let's have a look at biological age results since 2018, as I now have 28 blood tests over that period. And that's what we can see here. So starting in 2018 to 2019, average biological age using this test was 36.1 years. And then over 12 tests in 2020 to 2021, average biological age using the Levine test was 35.6 years. And then I significantly reduced it in 2022 to 33.8 years. And note that I've documented each of these data points with videos on the channel. Just check out the tracking biological age playlists and you'll find these videos, older videos. All right, so what about in 2023? Thus far, average pheno age is 34.6 years, and that includes the most recent potential outlier. And note that when comparing 2020 to 2021 data versus the last two years, so 12 tests versus the most recent 13 tests, I've significantly reduced pheno age relative to 2020 and 2021, as the past two years is 34.2 years, so an average 1.4 year age reduction. You know, I'm supposed to increase during aging, so being able to keep it at least flat or slightly below, uh, that's a small win. All right, so this isn't the only biological age metric that I use in addition to epigenetics and uh, metabolomics, oral microbiome, etc. I also use aging.ai to track biological age. So what's my data for that? Aging.ai includes 19 component biomarkers. And when entering that data as shown here, and this is using the North American data set for anyone who wants to double check the numbers, I get a predicted age of 28 years which is 22.7 years younger than my chronological. Now, just like we did for the Levine test, this is just one test. So for more context, let's have a look at previous data for aging.ai age, which is what we can see here. And I have 43 blood tests dating back to 2009 for aging.ai. Now, when I first started tracking, I only measured three times within the first five years, so 2009 to 2013. And over that time span, my aging.ai age was 32 years. And then starting in 2016, I started testing more often. And over that, that span from 20, 2016 to 2022, my average aging.ai age was 29.8 years, and that's over 34 tests. So what about in 2023? So we can see the most recent test with a 28 predicted age of 28. And thus far, over six tests, my average aging.ai age in 2023 is 30 years. In other words, Aging.ai age has been mostly stable at 30 years old for the past eight years. Now, what may be contributing to these biological age reductions, including diet and or supplements? And I'll cover that extensively in the next video coming on Sunday. But for now, let's dig into the full blood test report as there are some highlights and potential lowlights that I'd like to focus on. So first, let's take a look at HDL, which at 55 is now within that quote unquote optimal range of 50 to 60 for men being associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk. And that's potentially important because I've struggled with relatively low HDL since 2015. Over 43 tests since 2015, my average HDL was about 45 milligrams per deciliter. But over the past four tests, I've averaged 53 milligrams per deciliter and again into that quote-unquote optimal range of 50 to 60. I plan on covering that in terms of correlations, what may be associated or correlated with 
that recent improvement. So stay tuned for that data in an upcoming video. Conversely, triglycerides at 72 aren't terrible. Uh, less than 90 is associated with lowest all-cause mortality risk in a big meta-analysis. But over the last four tests, my average triglycerides are 70 milligrams per deciliter. Whereas for the 42 tests since 2015 before that, it was 58 milligrams per deciliter. And you can see using that p-value, those two groups of data are significantly different. So tri triglycerides have gone in the wrong direction for the last four tests. So getting them back lower while keeping HDL high is on the to-do list. And then we can see the CRP is less than 0.3. And then glucose, that brings us to metabolic markers of metabolic health. Well, some, some have questioned that my glucose levels being in the high 80s consistently may be a marker of, uh, or an early marker of prediabetes or being on the road to prediabetes. So to address that, I measured insulin five times in 2022, and my average value for that was three milli IUs per mil, which is pretty insulin sensitive. So I also measured HbA1c on the same day of this test, and I'll have that update coming in a soon uh, in a video coming soon. All right, on to page two. A couple of highlights: MCV 91.4. That's about age expected. I can do better, so the goal is to reduce that over the next few tests. And then neutrophils, which I highlighted two tests ago, as they were also less than 2,000 cells per microliter. Now you can see Quest reference range is 1,500 to 7,800, but in uh, large, in at least one large epidemiological study of more than 700,000 people, neutrophils less than 2,000 is associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. So this, that, that I've seen that twice over the past three tests, that's something I'm def definitely going to keep an eye on over the next few tests and may consider raising it to get, to get it above that 2,000 uh, cells per microliter threshold. But then there are several other questions, including did methyl B12 supplementation and more dietary choline, I started eating more or, or I added eggs back into the approach. Was that able to reduce homocysteine, which has been going in the wrong direction for a few tests, especially uh, probably encouraged by nicotinamide or, or sorry, uh, uh, nicotinic acid supplementation. So did the combination of methyl B12 and more dietary choline reduce homocysteine? So I'll include that update in an upcoming video. Also, have I made progress with increasing DHEA sulfate as that DHEA sulfate has been age expected and relatively low for many tests going back to last year. And then last but not least, I also measured testosterone on this test. So how's my testosterone? How are they, how's that looking in terms of age expected data? And is it youthful or aged? So stay tuned for that in a video coming very soon. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, epigenetic and telomere testing, or microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, which includes ApoB with a completely different panel, almost completely different panel than the at-home metabolomics, green tea, diet, uh, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Diet Trying brand, which I've got on here, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.